Good day, everybody. <clears throat> so 2.4 is simplifying rational fractional functions. So rational meaning fractions. Okay, we're simply simplifying fractions. Okay, a couple steps here. So what we're gonna do is factor the numerator and denominator completely. Then we're gonna cancel out common factors. And then we also have to just state, we're gonna state restrictions. So values that make the denominator equal to zero. All right, so number one, okay? So let's factor, factor out the first one. So, okay, so we looked for common factor first. So looking at the equation, we could factor out a common factor, which would be six X. When we factor out a six X, we're left with four X squared plus X plus two. Okay, so 24 divided by six is four. Take away one of the X's is X squared. X, six divided by six is one. X squared, if we remove one of the x's, it's x, and then 12 divided by 6 is 2, and then we remove the one x. Okay, and then we're going to, so over x, and now we're going to factor out this trinomial in the bracket. Sorry, this is 6x. Actually, before we do that, what we could do is cancel out the 6x and the 6x, so this is going to cancel out. So we're left with just this trinomial here. So this is a complex trinomial, so we're going to factor it. So let's see. 2 and 2, 4 and 1, 8 and 8, 9 and 9. I don't think we could factor it. No, so it's just going to be 4x squared plus x plus 2. Okay, so we can't factor it any further. If we do the cross method, 4, 1, 2, and 1, that won't get us to 1. 2 and 2 won't get us to 1 either. So this is factored completely. Okay, so that's simplified. And now, so we factored. So we factored first, where it cancel out the factors. So we cancel out the two, uh, six x's. And the state restrictions now. So what will make the denominator zero? So what can we plug into this denominator that will make it zero? And that would be zero. If we plug in zero here, zero times six will be zero. So X cannot equal zero. Okay, so that's a restriction. Okay, moving on to B. Okay, numerator, we can't factor. It's just X, but we're gonna factor the denominator. So look for the greatest common factor first. So they both can be divided by a two. So we'll remove a two and both of them have an X. So we're gonna remove an X from each of them. Two divided by two is one. X squared divided by X is just X. Negative four divided by two is negative two. And we remove one of the X's. So we have X over two X x minus 2. Here, the x is crossed out. So you're left with 1 in the numerator and 2 x, sorry, 2 times x minus 2 in the denominator. Okay, so now we have to state what x cannot be. Okay, so you can look at this step or you can look at the factored step. The factored step is probably more easier to determine which values we can plug in that won't work okay so if we plug a zero into this x here this would be two times zero which is zero and zero times this whole bracket will be zero so x cannot equal zero okay likewise if we plug in a positive two here two minus two will be zero and zero times two x will be zero so x cannot be zero or positive 2. Okay, moving on to C. Okay, numerator we cannot factor. So 3 minus 2x. But the denominator, 
greatest common factor would be 2. So we're going to remove a 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2x. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Okay, so in this case, it looks very similar. Negative 2x and 3 and 2x minus 3. Okay, so they very they look very similar, but they're not exactly the same. So we can't cross them out. So here, we have a positive 3, we have a negative 3 here. We have a negative 2 and a positive 2. So in this case, what we do is we factor out a negative 1 from the numerator. So when we factor out a negative 1, you're left with a negative 3 plus 2x. Okay, so now you have the you have the negative 3 plus 2x, which is the same as 2x minus 3. So this is the same as 2x minus 3. Okay, it's just reverse. So here we could cross off these brackets. So what we're left with is just a negative 1 over 2. So our final answer is negative 1 over 2. Okay. And now we, we state the restrictions. So what X cannot be. Okay, so what, what can we plug in here that will make this equal to zero? Okay, so this one's not as easy as the previous one. So this one, it's easy to see that you can plug in zero and this will be zero. It's easy to see that if you plug in two, this will be zero. Okay, so this is not as easy, but I'm gonna I'm going to show you what you have to do. So you're going to set this equal to zero. So we would set this equal to zero. So 2x minus 3 equals zero. And now we solve. We solve for x. So plus 3 on each side. So 2x equals 3. Divide by 2. x equals 3 over 2. So if we were to plug in 3 over 2 into the x here, this would that would make this bracket 0. Okay, so x cannot be 3 over 2. Okay, the shortcut for this one, if you guys remember, it will be very helpful for you now and in grade 12. So if you take this number, the second number, divided by the first number. So three divided by two, and then reverse the sign. So this is negative three divided by two, change the sign, so positive three over two, which is what we have here. So X cannot be three over two. By the way, when we are canceling out, okay, you can only cancel out when you're multiplying and dividing. You cannot, you cannot cross out when you're adding or subtracting. And that's very important for the next section. So here we are dividing, so we could cross off the 6x. Okay, here, again, dividing, we could cross off the x. Again, here, we are dividing, we could cross off. In uh, 2 point, I think it's 2.6 or 2.7, where we start doing adding and subtracting, we cannot cross off. You can only cross off if it's being multiplied and divided. All right, moving on to some little bit more difficult ones. Okay, so again, first step, factor, numerator and denominator. Okay, so let's do this here. So I'm just gonna do it on the side. So if we break down the first term, x squared, we get x and x. If we break down 10y squared, I would break 10 into 5 and 2, but we have a y squared, so y and y. Okay, but we want to get to a positive 3, and this is a negative 10. So I'm going to make the 2 negative. If I cross multiply here, I get 5xy and negative 2xy which makes 3xy. Okay, so that matches the middle term. So 3xy matches. 
So our first bracket is x plus 5y, and our second bracket is x minus 2y. For the numerator, x minus 5y and x, oops, Okay, now for the denominator, I'm going to do the same thing. So we have an x squared, so break it down into x and x. We have a 15y squared, so I'm going to do 5y and 3y. So 5 times 3 is 15, y squared is y and y. And we want to get to a positive 8, so this would be both positive. Cross multiply, you get 5xy and 3xy, which gives you 8xy, and that matches the middle term, okay? So our brackets are x plus 5y and x plus 3y. Oh, I just realized I did something wrong here. This one's supposed to be a positive. That was supposed to be x plus 5y, so x plus 5y. Okay, so now that was the first step. Factor the numerator and denominator completely. Now divide or cancel out common factors. So what's common here is the x plus 5 on both. So x plus 5 on both, so we cross them out because we're dividing here. So we're left with x minus 2y in the numerator and x plus 3y in the denominator okay we cannot cancel out these x's okay we can't cancel out because we're having a subtraction here okay in brackets it's fine but if it's x minus something there's no brackets here we can't we can't cancel them out same with the y's Okay, so the denominators now. So what can we plug in here? This is get a little bit tricky here. So what can we plug into x that will make this zero? Okay, so if x plus 5y equals zero, subtract 5y. So x cannot equal 5y. And it was kind of a weird one. So x cannot equal 5y. And over here, same thing, x can't be so x plus 3y equals 0. Bring the negative the, the 3y over. So x cannot be 5y or 3y. Okay, you don't have to list out the y's for in this case. So I just want to know the x values. So x cannot be 5y or 3y. Sorry, negative 3y. In the back of the book, they'll probably isolate for y as well. So they bring the x over, which would be negative x, and then divided by 5. So y couldn't be... Um, negative x divided by y, but don't worry about that. Right now, I just want you to put what x cannot be equal to. It's going to give you kind of a screenshot of what we're doing. Okay, last question now. E. Again, we're going to factor the top. I'm just going to erase some of these. There's some of this work here, so I have a little bit more room. Okay, so we're going to factor the numerator. So we're going to break down 2y squared. So 2y and 1y. 
and then we're going to break down negative 15. So negative 15 would be 5 and 3, but one of them has to be negative. So 5 and 3. But one has to be negative, and we have to get to a negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to make the 3 negative. Okay, so we'll cross multiply. 1y times 5 is 5y. 2y times negative 3 is negative 6y. 5 minus 6 is negative 1y. Negative 1y matches the middle term, so we factor correctly. That's negative y and negative 1y, which is the same thing. So our numerator becomes 2y plus 5 and y minus 3. Okay, so factor the numerator. Now let's factor the denominator. Okay, so 4y squared. Um, if you do 2 and 2, it's not going to work. Okay, just by looking at it. So what I'm going to do is 4y and 1y. So I'm going to break 4y squared into 4y and 1y. Okay, now I'm going to break the 3 into 3 and 1. Or in this case, 1 and 3. If I cross multiply, I get 1y and 12y. If you add them together, you get 13y. Okay, so 13y does not necessarily match the middle. The middle is negative 13. So what we have to do is make both of these negative. So it's a negative 1 times a negative 3 is positive 3, which makes this negative 1 and negative 12 and negative 13. So in the denominator, I get 4y minus 1. Remember the brackets go horizontally, so 4y minus 1 and y minus 3. Okay, so that was the first step. Factor, numerator, and denominator. Second one is divide out the uh, common factors. So y minus 3 is common for both. So we're going to cross them out. So we're left with just these two terms. So 2y plus 5 over 4y minus 1. Okay, so we're left with this binomial and this binomial. Okay, so now here we don't have any x's, we just have y. So we have to state what y cannot be, which is what the third step, the step tells us, state restrictions. Okay, so the shortcut is take the second number divided by the first number. So one, so this is negative one divided by four, but we change the sign. So if this is negative one, it becomes a positive one. So positive one over four. Okay, and this one here, what could we plug into y to make this zero? It would be positive three. If I plug in positive three here, positive three minus three is zero. So. It cannot, y cannot be 1 over 4 or positive 3. Okay, so that's the lesson for 2.4. It's actually a crucial lesson because we'll be doing a lot of these over the next three sections. Okay, so homework is page 112, 1 to 5, but for each of these, just do A and B. So 1AB, 2AB, 3AB. 4AB, 5AB, and then we have 10 and 17.